Well, hey, Vinyl Community, Elliot here, Lazy Dogs Records. Got a VCLT I'd like to show you, along with some new records I acquired, some from an independent record shop uh, near me, some from Amazon, some from uh, Discogs, and I'll share with you, uh, before I get to the VCLT, what's playing in the background is something I acquired from Amazon's warehouse. In other words, uh, someone got it, wasn't happy, shipped it back, and they're reselling. Uh, the all-seeing eye, Wayne Shorter, I actually already had it in my cart waiting. Problem was, I had a new copy waiting in my cart, and I was waiting for the Eagle to fly, and the Eagle didn't fly for about five or six days, and when the Eagle flew, I went to get it, and it had sold out. So I looked around and they had one in the warehouse, a used copy, of course, one somebody had gotten, for some reason wasn't happy, and shipped it back. Now we know that a lot of record collectors can be extremely picky about their vinyl. Some for good reason, others a little uh, OCD, is that, uh, OCD, is that what they call it? Uh, just a little over the top. Uh, so I, I pulled the trigger on this. This ended up costing me, uh, tax included, $24.27 or something like that. So if I bought it new, it would tax and everything, it would have run uh, uh, closer to $30. If I bought it on Discogs, used copies were running $35, $40. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll take the chance. If I bought a new copy from Walmart, for instance, of this album, it would have been $26.99 plus $5 shipping plus tax, which would have uh, shot it up into about the $35 range. So I saved about $10, but I'm taking a chance. So was the chance worth it? Yes and no. Amazon shipped this sucker to me in a plastic bag. I know they usually ship it very securely but it occasionally we'll get something from Amazon in a plastic bag, and this one was. Believe it or not, it came all the way from California. It took about five or six days to get here. In all the travels from California to North Carolina, not a bend, corner crease, nothing. It's fine, just chipped in a flimsy plastic bag. No protection but the actual jacket. That shows you how uh, resilient vinyl records really are. We think of them as some delicate thing. They're not, folks. <laughs> they are very resilient. Uh, it didn't quite crackle when I opened it the first time, but it, it had a little residual crackle when I opened it. I examined it, some hairline, hairline scratches, you know, uh, from the, uh, the paper sleeve maybe or something like that are from handling in the where in the uh, pressing warehouse or something but uh, nothing that appeared to be anything that would create any uh, auditory auditory difficulties it side one played perfect perfect I said hey man I just got one the only imperfection I could find there right in here there's a little bit of a wrinkle and that doesn't, that appeared to be something that was from the from when it was put together, not it's not a bend or anything. So I'm saying maybe this person just was too particular. They saw some little hairline marks in the vinyl and that little wrinkle right in here, right here, just a little wrinkle, and they sent it back. Played side two, first song of the three, which is Chaos, played perfectly. This record is so far is just perfect. There's no no surface noise even between tracks. Just plays beautifully. Now I did clean it before I put it on, uh, but on side on side two, track two, face of the deep. There's about a minute of surface noise, and then it goes away. And then for the last track, nothing once again. So there's a, about a minute on side two. Uh, that is uh, noticeable surface noise. Okay, so that's why the guy shipped it back. I looked at it closely. 
there's nothing more than those very hairline markings that have had no effect whatsoever other than cosmetically on the vinyl. But there's a squiggly one in the middle of track two on here and in, on face of the D. And I think that must be the culprit. There's just, it goes back and forth. So when that needle goes across multiple spots real close together, uh, we're getting a little bit of surface noise. I don't think I can clean it out. So, was it worth it? I think it was actually. The, the album just sounds great. I don't think if I'm paying, if I'm not giving the record my undivided attention, I don't think I would even notice the surface no noise that does exist on this. So, got it for less than $25. I think it's, it's a good bargain, but again, whenever you buy from the warehouse, you know you're getting something somebody sent back for one reason or another. Okay. Uh, now, the VCLT. Mark Lastman, I will put a link to his channel. He is just starting out with a channel. He's been in the vinyl community as a contributor on uh, live streams. Very interesting, very nice fellow uh, up in Canada. I believe he's in Toronto, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, just a really, really nice guy, always with interesting things to say in the peanut gallery. And he got my address, and he, knowing that I'm getting to get into jazz more and more, and he sent me this record. And I can't thank him enough. Charles Mingus, a modern jazz symposium of music and poetry with Charles Mingus. Now that's a mouthful right there. And I really didn't know what I was getting into when I got this. It made it sound like this was going to be some lecture with music, you know, interspersed within the lecture or something, but that's not what it is at all. Uh, it is it is this musical album. Vocals on the first track, Scenes in the City, uh, interesting uh, kind of the viewpoint from a jazz aficionado living in, uh, I guess, New York, Harlem, I believe. Uh, and uh, then I was expecting to have that in the whole thing but it's not that's the only one that has the vocals uh, this is a 2001 release on get back which is uh, out of Italy and uh, just a very very good album I'm so grateful uh, to Mark for sending this to me I'm growing 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 in my knowledge and in an appreciation of jazz and I always thought Charles Mingus would be too far out there for me, but this is the second Charles Mingus album I've got, and I don't feel that at all. Uh, I really like, uh, and, and he seems accessible uh, to me in my early stages of, of jazz development. Mark, thank you so much for this great uh, gift you sent me. I do appreciate it. I want to go over the other new records that I purchased uh, recently. Uh, this one I did purchase because a VC member posted a review uh, and uh, it sounded like a great uh, and interesting uh, album for me. Uh, this is, the, of course, the John Coltrane, My Favorite Things. This is a kind of Atlantic Rhino combination pressing made in Germany and it's composed of both, of two records, both the stereo and the uh, and the mono, which they just found the uh, the master tape for the mono of of my favorite things from John Coltrane recently, and put that out. It's not a gatefold, yeah, if that matters to you, but a really nice album. And uh, I'll put a link to the review for that so you can learn more about it. Uh, Am I influenced by Record Store Day or the feeling that uh, I can't miss out, don't want to miss out? Sometimes. I did purchase this. I didn't run out and spend all uh, the early early morning hours waiting in line at a uh, for a record store to open on Record Store Day. I purchased this a couple of days later from In Groove. Uh, a good deal on this one. Uh, the Art Pepper meets the rhythm section, of course. This is the... Um, Record Store Day mono copy. 
and I, I like this. Didn't know anything about it, but I got caught up in the in, in the excitement about it coming out, and I think the stereo version is coming out later this summer. Uh, but it, it's very good. It's a craft recording. I know a lot of people picked that up. Uh, I pre-ordered this one uh, from None Such. What a great label. And Taj Mahal and Ry Cooter, two of my favorite, more traditional artists. And this is the songs. Uh, get on board the songs of Sonny Terry and Brandon McGee. Now, that's not strictly Sonny Terry and Brandon McGee material, but it's material that they did sometime in their careers. And it's it's just Taj, uh, Ra, and uh, Jakeen uh, Cooter playing drums and bass, the, the son of Ra Cooter. Is this an essential album? No. You're better, you know, if you don't have any or much Ry Cooter or Taj Mahal uh, or one or the other, I would go back and dig into their catalog over the years uh, and get other stuff from them before I go out and buy this album. But it's a perfectly enjoyable album. Now, here's uh, Sturgill Simpson. I'm cold, run cold and hot on Sturgill. But this is uh, the ballad of Dude and Juanita, or Dodd and Juanita. And it's a short album, a concept acoustic album, using lots of excellent, excellent acoustic players. Tim O'Brien's on this album, uh, Sierra Hole's on here, uh, Stuart Duncan on the fiddle. Uh, and this is an independent record store day release, I believe. And you see it comes in that kind of a beigey, clear, or tr uh, translucent uh, pressing. Not the greatest pressing in the world. There's a little surface noise there, even though I cleaned it. Uh, there's two little dots in there uh, in the translucent. Doesn't interfere with the recording at all. But, uh, I guess that gives you an idea of quality control. Uh, a little trash got in there when they when they pressed this uh, concept album, kind of reminiscent of of um, Willie Nelson's Red Headed Stranger. Uh, good a good album. Uh, great picking, as I said. I, I've listened to it about three times, but I haven't been able to dedicate the uh, listening time to it concentrate and completely absorb the story because it is a story uh, that he's telling uh, of, of these folks and uh, not very expensive this isn't uh, they bill it as a indie exclusive natural vinyl illustrated uh, insert there's an insert like this in there no uh, lyric sheet which I would have appreciated having a lyric sheet so I can kind of follow along with the story a little better, but uh, but it's not there. Only it was only 22 something, uh, so it's, it's a nice deal. A little a little bit noisy, not the greatest pressing in the world, but but nothing too bad. Uh, from Amazon, I picked this up. Sun House, Forever on My Mind. Some of you probably seen this, and this is uh, recorded live at Wabash College in Crawfordville. In Indiana, I guess that is November 23rd, 1964. The Great Sun House has been rediscovered, and uh, Dick Waterman from Canned Heat rediscovered him and has kind of worked as his manager to help him uh, re revitalize his career. And this has got some some classics on here like uh, Death Letter and some stuff uh, that hasn't been, uh, wasn't easily found. It's on Easy Eye Sound and Arbach, what's his name? Uh, Dan Arbach, or Arbeck uh, from the was it Black Keys. He, uh, he put this together, cleaned it up, and got this out. Uh, so this is really, really good. I really like this one. And finally, uh, over at the record uh, record crate in Raleigh. I went in the other day and picked up some records I'd bought on YouTube auctions and picked up these new albums. Uh, the uh, 
Sturgill Simpson, for instance, instance I, I got that and I got the new Bonnie Raitt. I love Bonnie. I love Bonnie. Just like that it's called. And look at the photos in there. Oh man. What a great artist. Uh, she produced it. Ryan Freeland recorded and mixed it. And a lot of these songs she wrote herself. Includes the year, lyrics. Bonnie is 72 now, I believe, still going strong. And there's kind of an aqua color vinyl pressing. I don't, you know, I, I'm not hung up on colored vinyl. I'll take it or leave it, to be honest with you. Uh, if it costs the same, oftentimes I'll get it just for the novelty of it. And it also comes, now I'm assuming this is signed by Bonnie, a little postcard of Bonnie. And she looked good, 72 years old. Signed by Bonnie. I'm assuming she signed all these cards because uh, it, it kind of indicates that or doesn't say specifically. But what it does say is limited edition teal vinyl with special card from Bonnie. So special card from Bonnie, I guess. Uh, is this an earth-shattering Bonnie Raitt album? No. Is this... Uh, an album you'd be disappointed in? No. Uh, good material, uh, good playing, I liked it. It's, uh, it could have come early in Bonnie, this album, the music on this album could have come early in Bonnie's career, mid-career, or today. It's not something that's uh, a, a, a big departure from what you would expect to hear from Bonnie Ray. But, uh, but I enjoy it. I, I wasn't as impressed on the first play I've listened to it about, th I try to listen to it when I get new records, I try to listen to them at least two, usually three or four times, and this, uh, I've listened to this three times, and the more I listen, the more I like it. I think one of the things at first that put me off a little bit was uh, the Hammond, uh, Hammond 3, B3 uh, organ is used prominently in this, and that's just not my, my favorite uh, instrument. I, I would have preferred being the more of a purist, maybe, or somebody that likes the the more organic sound. I wish she had used a piano player for those parts where the organ is used here. But she does lots of slide work on here, which of course is, is the great hallmark of body. Uh, so those are new albums and VCLT that I've picked up recently. I was going to show some stuff I got at the record show. I'll do that on another video. So, anyway, everybody, uh, those are some records. I, uh, you, you may be interested in picking up yourself. Uh, all of them, good music. And I will, uh, I will remind everybody to be kind to their neighbor. Uh, there's a lot of evil in this world. There's a lot of, a lot of problems in this world. But if we try to go out every day, even if it's hard to do, try to be nice to that person you see on the street, person you, you encounter on the road, your neighbor, your family. Just try to be kind to everybody, even if it's hard to do sometimes. Because remember, folks, we're all neighbors. All right? Everybody take care. See you.